So we're joined from Bellhaven University, home of the Blazers, by my friend uh, Velma Jackson. I won't say the year you graduated, Shamika Black. Uh, we thank you so much for joining us today. We got a room full here with us at Velma Jackson High School, your alma mater. And we're recording this for all of our juniors and seniors in Kyle's career readiness uh, in Madison County Schools, Madison Central, Original, and Germantown, uh, and the Academic Options Center, and our YouTube channel. So thank you so much for taking some time for us to talk about this very important thing that gets overlooked an awful lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, so before we get into all you do as an academic advisor and things that students need to be aware of in college, take us back to your background. You are a Velma Jackson alum, and you went to Millsaps. Yes. Um, I'm not ashamed to say my year. So I graduated from Belmont Jackson in 01. Go Falcons. Um, and right after graduation, I went to Millsaps. I graduated from there in 2005 with a degree in psychology. Um, and after that, I started working. Um, I worked for over 12 years uh, with an online high school pr uh, program. Um, we worked with students across the U.S., mainly job course students. Um, and after that, I came here to Belhaven. That's awesome. Um, and and just to and I know you're not a recruiter, but just to briefly plug Bellhaven, I think a lot of people overlook Bellhaven when it comes to a lot of the things they offer. Um, mm -hmm. and like I said, before we started recording, our uh, probably maybe it's not official yet. Valedictorian is coming to to Bellhaven next year. And it's a great fit for her because she wants to stay in the small classes, mm -hmm. wants to have that. Uh, relationship with her professor and she's getting a great scholarship and she's still going to be able to be involved in several things she was involved in here like the band mm -hmm. yes and I thought um she comes here she also get a scholarship for being in the band here um so that's a plus um yeah a lot of students do overlook Bellhaven um it is like you said one like a small campus and that was one of the main reasons I went to Millsaps because of the size um, coming from Velma Jackson, I didn't want to go to a big university. I want to kind of like keep that same closeness in, um, and I thrive there. Loved it. Um, the students who are here, they love it. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have students come in my office and say, Ms. Shamika, I like the class size. I have this one on one time with my professor. Even our transfer students, um, that's one of the big things that they love about it. Like their professor actually knows who they are by name and face. You know, they're just not a, not a number in the classroom. Absolutely. Well, uh, we don't have to go down the uh, the Bellhaven rabbit hole. We have Master Davis who does that for us every year, and I've never oh, yeah. met anybody on fire for Bellhaven. Um, <laughs> but what you do is you is you advise a good bit of the students there at Bellhaven. Now, whether somebody goes to Bellhaven or not, I think what you do is so important because I think students have a misconception of when they go to college, of this is the way it's going to be, I'm going to have my classes at this time, and it doesn't exactly work like that. So talk about – you know, when students come in, especially as freshmen or as transfers, and they mm -hmm. and they sit down with you, no matter what their major is, how you work through how these classes are scheduled, because it's a lot more difficult than people realize. Yes. Um, I have students come in, especially my freshmen. The first thing they want to tell me, I want any eight o'clock classes, Mr. Jamaica. I don't want any eight o'clock. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll see what I can do because it's not guaranteed that you're not going to have an eight o'clock class, you know, but that's like the big thing. Like, I don't, I don't want, I want to sleep in. I don't want to get up early. Um, so that's one of the big things. Also, um, I'm pretty sure it's like this at other colleges, but especially here at Bellhaven, we have classes that are only offered in the fall. Um, or only spring or fall odd, fall even, spring odd, spring even. So it's just like a big puzzle putting together, making sure they're taking the classes when they're supposed to, especially when they're offered. Um, I have some students say, well, can I wait and take that? Well, if you do, that could extend your time here. And, you know, who wants to stay here extended time, you know? So just, you know, really working around those schedules, trying to get them, you know, something they really want, but also like, hey, you really got to go ahead and take this class. Yeah, and then, you know, once you get into your major, and I know this is the case in any university, mm -hmm. there's going to be times where a class is only offered once, and that professor wants to teach it at 8 in the morning and get it out of the way. And yes. you can complain about it all you want, but you've got to take that class if you want to get your diploma. That's it. I tell them quickly, like, hey, go ahead and take it. Get adjusted to these 8 o'clock classes. You did it in high school, and, you know, when you go into your career, you're probably going to have to go to work at 8 o'clock. So get adjusted to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's important for everybody to realize because we have several here that are getting ready to graduate, going to different community colleges and universities. And I think to go ahead and get that mindset of, look, you can't go in there at, you know, making all these demands because at the end of the day, yeah, people like you are going to work to try to accommodate 
but especially if you're going to play sports at a university, oh, yeah. you're not, you're going to have eight o'clock classes because you're going to have practice in the afternoon. Right. Yes. And that's another big thing. Is, um, unfortunately, I don't work with athletes, but everyone else in my department do. And I kind of like, you know, accustomed to what they have to deal with. Um, like you just said, um, athletes, they are, they're, um, practicing, um, many hours a day. Um, also they have team meetings. Um, it's just a whole lot different from being in high school sports. Um, and then when you, when you put into them having to travel with games, um, that's another big deal. Um, so it's just a lot. Yeah. And, and I know, um, you really talk about uh, what your job is, and, and this is the great thing about smaller universities like a Bell Haven or a Millsaps Mississippi College, is that when you have that academic advisor, you really get the chance to sit down with a student and mm -hmm. let's set some reasonable and accomplishable goals. Mm -hmm. Because, I, you know, again, I went to Southern Miss. I'm not knocking the big universities because they do a great job, but you're probably not going to get that one-on-one -on -one attention like you would at a smaller university. Right. So talk about some of the things that you have to talk about when students come to you that they may not have thought about when they walk in the door. Okay. One of the big things um, for me talking with my students is, especially depending on what their major is, we have a lot of students who come here and they major in sports medicine. And that's one of our big majors because um, their goal is to go to PT school. Um, mm -hmm. Letting them know right off the bat, hey, what school are you want to go to after Bellhaven? You need to look up their requirements. GPA, one of the biggest ones. Um, because I can easily have a student sitting here with a 2.0, and you know, you're not getting to PC school with a 2.0. So that's one of the big things. Do your research. When you figure out your major, do your research so you can know what your GPA needs to stay at, or you know the minimal you need to be at, at the least. Um, also with nursing, um, a lot of our nursing students come in, okay, their big thing is, I want to be a nurse, Ms. Jamaica, but do you know what the requirements are? You know, there are prereqs to get into the nursing programs. You can't have anything lower than a C in your classes to be in the nursing program. Um, things like that, and they look like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, so just being very informative about what your goals are. So it's important to have those goals, but be specific with your goals. Um, just do your research, whether it's for med school, law school, know what you have to have after your undergrad. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that we've had a lot of students, um, no matter what decision they make, they're getting informed. They're saying, look, I want to we had one student and she's not here, so I won't talk about her. So, but her goal for the longest time is she said she wanted to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. She looked into the, to the degree requirements at several universities and she's like, eh, I probably need to do something else. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But mm -hmm. the main thing is not wasting time, wasting right. money, wasting all types of hours when you really are not going to be chasing that because obviously the goal is to get in and get out, especially right. with the cost of college rising. It really is important to sit down with someone like you. Let's set out a plan and let's see what we can do to, to get you graduated onto that next step. Right. Uh, now, what are uh, some of the things that you see that, uh, and we talked about a few of these, what are some of the, uh, of the misconceptions that uh, you see students have, especially the first time they walk in there about how, how degree programs work and how, uh, and how class schedules work? Okay. Um, so with the certain degrees, um, they will come in, they automatically think just say, um, if they're a history major, they think they're just only going to take history classes. Um, they forget about the Ooh. general education courses that they have to take. Ooh. Like no matter what your major is, you got to have a math, you have to have comp one and two, you have to have literature. Um, and then of course wow. we're a Christian school, so there are Bible classes that they have to take. So they're real shocked about that. They think they're actually just going to take what they're majoring in. Wow. Mm -hmm. I did not think about that, but that's also another good reason, to, especially our juniors consider dual enrollment mm -hmm. where you, you know, you don't have to take those or, you know, if somebody wants to go to the community college route first, which is a great idea, you can knock all that out. And then when you're at your university, um, you can just focus on your major. Yeah. So that is another strategy that I think a lot of people should really think about as we start, as they start making decisions. Mm -hmm. ah, so people really come in there and think, I'm just going to take this kind of class. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> now, and, and again, and, and again, I know you're not a recruiter and I know you're on the academic side, but um, what are some other ways that you encourage students to accomplish these goals? Because obviously we all know the academic side of college is very important. 
But there's a lot more to the college experience and to taking that next step than just your GPA, because there's a lot of networking that needs to be done. There's a lot of activities to uh, there's a lot of activities to do. And there's a lot of ways that you can get involved as far as internships and student organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, that's another thing. Internships, that's one thing that I recommend students, if you can and they have the opportunity, do your internships. Um, like some of our majors require internships, others don't, but still, it's good to have that experience. Because um, even now, my graduates who just graduated, um, they're reaching out to me for like letters of recommendation. But, you know, they're saying also, Ms. Shemika, I didn't think it would be this hard to find a job. I have the degree, you know, why I'm not getting hired. Um, cause a lot of them get that, you know, like they send their resume in, but they will get the response, you know, do you have any experience in this area? Like they're looking for more than just having that degree. So if you can do internships, do that because that's going to get you some experience under your belt. Yeah. And, and especially, and I think a big selling point for Bellhaven and I try to tell kids this, you know, again, I'm not knocking the other universities, but like Bellhaven, Millsats, Mississippi college, you're in Jackson. There's a lot of businesses here that are always hiring internships. Mm -hmm. are always hiring interns even if it's just for the summer you can get that hands-on experience and you can really get a, a a good glimpse of how the business works and it's something you can put on your resume so you can have an idea of what you're getting into once you do graduate so um and especially you know and, and you mentioned the pre-law group you know all these all these law firms in jackson they're always looking for clerks over the summer uh, right. uh to come in and help mm -hmm. and then and then uh the student organizations as well that are tied in to the major. So, so what are some of those that, you know, and I know that's not your department, but what are some of the other ones that you kind of know about there at Bellhaven? Um, I know like with nursing, it's pretty easy for them because they have to do clinical. So they're already getting out there and they're getting their experience. Um, with business, they have their organizations that also put their students out there. They have speakers coming in weekly, talking to them like from different businesses. Um, our science department, um, they have like the chemistry society, um, just different departments have their different organizations and they can get active that way. And also we have so many volunteer um, opportunities on campus with different groups. Um, it's just also about the students, you know, getting involved. So that's a big thing. Like when you go to school, you try to get involved, even if this is just with one organization, be involved because it's going to get you out there. Yeah, and I know Bellhaven has a great relationship with First Presbyterian Church, and mm -hmm. they do a lot of joint community service projects there in the Bellhaven and Jackson area. And these kids don't want to believe me on this, but that is an unbelievable resume builder because mm -hmm. all these corporations that want to, you know, push their community service, if you've shown that you can do community service, that makes you look a lot more attractive as a candidate. So right. like we said, it, it really is a triangle. It's the academic, the community service, and then uh, and the networking, I think is so important when it comes to a great college experience. Mm -hmm. And another thing uh, for students, what they probably don't think about is, and I know I struggle with this myself, um, being at Valma Jackson, I think it was like my junior year, we started the block scheduling. So that means we was in class longer, uh, but just only four classes a day. So I didn't really have to go home and study. I was an honor student. It just came easy for me. But once I started college, I had to figure out, OK, how do I study now? Because I didn't know how to. I had to pretty much teach myself how to study. So that's one of the big things I try to tell my students coming in. Um, figure it out now. Figure out how you best learn and how you study, because it's going to make a big impact on your classes and your grades. Um, try not to procrastinate. Uh, that's another thing. Um, you know, when you get your syllabus on the first day of class, use those. Um, time management, learn how to use your time wisely. Um, we give out students planners at the beginning of the semester. Um, so figure out how do you best plan, um, whether you get an actual planner, um, use your cell phones, um, you have a calendar on there, you keep up with your important dates. Get your syllabus. You're going to have all your important dates on there. Go ahead. Write those down for the entire semester. Don't wait till the last minute if you know you have an exam coming up. Don't wait till the night before to study. Do not procrastinate. Don't wait until the night before and do a 10-page paper and think you're going to have this paper, you know, and get an A on it. Like, prepare, plan, use your time wisely, especially our athletes, because you have less time than a normal student, because you're going to be putting in so much time for practicing and training and, you know, doing your weights, um, team meetings, and just, you know, traveling during your um, season um, for your sports. So be prepared, because time, you know, 
you know you're in class now, you're in school, you know your whole day, but when you're in college, you are going to have a lot of free time. You know, I have students, they may have an eight o'clock or nine o'clock and they're through for the rest of the day. So learn how to use your time. Don't just let it, you know, don't just, you know, say, oh, I'm gonna go have fun with my friends. Don't do that. Um, use your time wisely. Yes, take some time for yourself, but study. If it's just five or 10 minutes a day, put that time in per class each day so you can be prepared because you may have, you know, exams are going to look different. They're going to be essay driven, you know, like you have to do your essay questions for, you know, it's not going to be always multiple choice. So prepare now. And the better you have that mindset, the easier it's going to be when you get to campus. I agree. And I think that'd be the, I think that'd be the case anywhere. And another mm -hmm. thing on top of that is, um, you know, one of the only things that I think is negative about Velma Jackson, you know, I've been here coming on to be next year, be 10 years. Um, there's so many great things about this school, but unfortunately people can't help where they're born. They can't help where they, they grow up. So you're very sheltered around the same type of people, same group of people your entire life. When you get to the college, no matter where you go, you're going to have to work with people you have never been around. And mm -hmm. I don't care where you go. That is true. Um, and another thing is learn how to use your resources. Um, I had a student actually this semester told me he came to my office and he said, Mr. Mika, I didn't even know where the library was located. Like what? <laughs> wow. So, you know, I like, learn your resources. Um, I'm pretty sure other campuses do, uh, but we have tutoring here at Bellhaven. It's free to all of our students. Um, I've even had students come in and like if they're struggling in a class, I recommend, you know, hey, why don't you go to the Think Center for tutoring? It's free. Use this resource. And I've had a student tell me, I'm not dumb. Um, excuse me, you know, going to tutoring does not mean you're dumb. It's just you're taking the steps to to better yourself so you can understand the material you need to pass your classes. Um, so never feel like, oh, I can't go there because it's gonna make me look some type of way. Don't do that. Use your resources. Um, and we also work with um, a PBI community grant that's actually set aside for like our minority students. So that's an extra resource for our oh, minority yeah. students. Um, they pretty much structure on like the STEM majors, like um, science and math and engineering um, to retain retention in those subject areas for our students. Because a lot of students, like they want those areas. They want to major in science. They want to major in math and engineering was once they get started, they realize, you know, the rigor of the, those classes, they tend to like, oh, let me change my major um, or not stick with that area. So, you know, those resources are set there so we can make sure our students strive and actually stick with what they want to, you know, major in. Yeah. And a point in that is that, you know, even if you do pass, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 in a GPA could be the difference between a job and not a job. Right. So little things like that that you do in college can really make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have some really good questions from the students. Okay. Uh, uh, this first one is Cam Murray, our Mr. Mm -hmm. Velma Jackson, senior. Okay. Uh, he's he's going to Heinz, but he's still kind of deciding on what he wants to do after that. And he mm -hmm. asks, what are some things that I should keep in mind when I'm choosing my major? Okay. Um, one of the big things, just realize, like, what your major is possibly what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. So it needs to be something that you know you're going to find joy out of, you know, no one wants to be working a job where they're just not happy. Um, make sure it's something you're going to enjoy and something that you love to do. So just keep those in mind. Like a lot of people just say, oh, I'm going to major in nursing because it's a lot of money. You know, like the money is fine, but no, it needs to be something that you know you're going to thrive and have fun, enjoy and doing. So just Absolutely. make sure it's something you're going to enjoy. Absolutely. And then, and all, but at the same time, something that you know that you can handle academically because- right. You can make a lot of money as a physicist, and that may be fun. But if I took a physics class, it might as well be Chinese. So <laughs> you have to look at you have to look at your talents as well. Yes, um, right. I like this one. This is a, a junior, but uh, this is Selena Johnson, and she mm -hmm. asked, "What would be the best advice to manage my course load, time, and extracurriculars effectively?" Okay, um, I'm a planner girl. For uh, for instance, <laughs> I always have my planner. Um, you can find me on a Sunday evening. I'm writing down everything I got going on for that week, so I know what's going on. <laughs> Um, so, you know, the first thing you're going to do in college, you're going to fix your schedule up. So once you get your schedule and know the times of your classes, um, that's how you best, you know, plan it around your time because you got to go to class, go to class. Um, and then you can know how much extra time you have on your hands, set aside studying time, um, time to get all your assignments and, um, 
completed. Um, and if you have a part-time job, make sure you know like how many hours you have to work each week and you can set that in with your schedule. Because that's the thing about college. Each semester is going to be different. You know, you may have three classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the fall, but then you may have two in the spring. Um, so just, you know, just be mindful of that. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned part-time job because something that I've seen, because I've worked on three college campuses and when I was in college, I saw this. I understand people have to work. I mean, we have high school students that have to work. But you see so many college students fall into the trap of they get a pretty good part-time job. It's mm -hmm. paying them a little money, and they're like, I'm making good money doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. And they really kind of fall apart from their academic side. And then five years later, they're like, I wish I could finish my degree. Mm -hmm. I like this one. This is Deja Weaver. Uh, she's going to the military, but uh, she's still trying to figure out her academic path after that. Um, but she asked, what is the most damaging mistake you see kids make when it comes to making academic decisions? I would say one of the things I see here the most is holding on to a major that they know they're struggling and not like they continuously fail a class. Um, I'll tell you, for instance, like our sports med uh, program here, they have to pass human anatomy one and two before they can move forward into their sports med classes. Um, and some students, they their a &P gets them and they keep failing the class. And, you know, I have to have that tough conversation like, you know, you're not, you know, you're not making the grade for this class, you know, let's look at some other majors. Um, no, Mr. Mick, I'm, I can do it. I can do it. And then, you know, they, tr they try the class a second time and we'll still write back there and they're not getting the grade. Um, just knowing when to let go and try to find something else. That's like one of the biggest things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, this is RJ Jones. He's a junior. Okay. Uh, I think you might know him pretty well. Uh, yeah. But he asked, <laughs> how do you get involved on campus in a way that will support your academic and your professional development? Okay, say that again. How do you get involved on campus in a way that will support your academic and professional development? Okay. Um, once you know what your major is, um, get a relationship with your professors in that area um, because they're going to be the ones to really guide you and lead you in that area of expertise. Um, make sure you work with them. If they have like a club in that area. Make sure you use that like to your advantage. Uh, participate. Um, volunteer to help with things. Um, and that's how you're going to really get in with your area. Um, also, just working with student organizations, you know, on campus, do like some leadership things. Um, and that would keep you involved and kind of like, you know, stuff that you can put on your resume that'll look good. Absolutely. Uh, this is Shania Kyles. Actually transferred to Velma Jackson all the way from Minnesota. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and she's a member of our Blue Diamond Dance team. But she asked, uh, what pathway do you recommend students to go down when they come in and they don't have an idea of what they want to major in? Um, so usually when we have students come in, it's undeclared. Of course, they're going to take some classes, like their general education classes that they automatically have to take. Um, and then what I usually do, I ask them, you know, what are some things you're interested in? And I'll try to make sure I pull at least one or two classes in some areas that they like. They're like introduction classes. Um, so they can kind of get a feel. And then I also meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, talk about all the different majors we offer, um, some things they can do in each one of those majors and kind of go from there. Uh, but once they try to, you know, take a few of those classes, they kind of get a feel like, you know, I'm really interested in this. Let me try this major. Um, and I also, you know, advise that they go talk to the chair of that department um, just to get some, you know, feel on that as well. And that's another and, and that's another advantage of a small school. I, I know the, the president of Bellhaven is out in the community. I mean, I, I've actually met him a couple of times. I've never met somebody more personable when it comes to a, a college president. So, you know, use those resources. And, and you know, in a smaller community, you're going to have more access to the people that are in charge. So I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with that statement. Mm -hmm. I just got one more. This is Gavin Griffin, our uh, going to East Mississippi to play football, uh, Mr. 1A football here at Belma Jackson and he asked what's the most difficult part of your job um I you know I advise over 300 students each semester here um wow. and probably the hardest thing is um 
being personable with my students and getting to really know them. And when they're going through, you know, whether it's a death in the family or just financial issues, um, taking it on for them um, and being there for them because that, you know, it gets to you sometimes because you really love your students. Uh, so that would probably be like the hardest part of my job. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're almost out of time and we thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, and I know you told your year 2001, but still, I always say this to every Velma Jackson alum. We're so proud to call you an alumni of our amazing school and just all the great work you're doing. So I think I can speak for everybody um, at Velma Jackson is saying that, but you know um, it wasn't that long ago. We're about the same age, but uh, that long ago, you were at the same school in the same community, walking these same hallways Mm -hmm. And you had to make the same decisions these kids are making now and did not have the same types of resources that they have. But yet you still become <laughs> extremely successful. So mm -hmm. we are literally graduating next Friday. These yes. kids are getting ready to make a huge adjustment. So what can they do to prepare their self and prepare their mind to for what is about to happen? Just know what you want to do and not necessarily know what you want to do. Have a plan. Get you some goals and stick to those goals. Um, even if it's just three three goals, write them down this summer. And when you start college in the fall, stick to those goals. Because um, if you know what you're going in working for, you're going to pretty much stick to those. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, ask for help. Use your resources and you will be fine. Absolutely. Well, we thank you so much for taking some time for us today. <laughs> My my friend, Shamika Black, over there at <laughs> Bellhaven University, home of the Blazers. Talk to you Thank soon, you my friend. Thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> All right. See ya. All right. Bye.